not a YouTuber, just like making videos. And the name of this dissertation here is that a white life doesn't mean anything unless it's taken by a black person or some kind of other non-white person. Um, I was watching a video by, you know, one of them old videos about Trayvon Martin by Michael5723. And he said something about um, how um, about Trayvon Martin, how uh, a black life doesn't mean anything unless a white person or a non-black person takes it and the hypocrisy of black people. Oh, we get riled, we got riled up for the death of Trayvon Martin and uh, you know what I'm saying, we don't give a damn about, you know, black on black crime or South Side Chicago, oh, <laughs> you know, that, that rah-rah. You know, but the thing is with Trayvon Martin, that was a justice thing of a Zimmerman not going to jail. It's whether the scales of justice are uh, balanced out for black people. I don't know why people constantly get that misconstrued. You know, like we just got riled up because a black person killed, I mean, a white person or a non-black person killed a, a black person. You know, so, um, yeah, so let me go into my presentation here. I think about um, the O.J. Simpson trial. You know, whether you believe he did it or not, I know there's uh, speculation that there was a serial killer or O.J. Simpson hired some hitman or whatever. But at the, um, when O.J. was acquitted, um, you know, popular consensus was he did it and, uh, he, uh, him and his lawyers manipulated the court systems in their favors and he got off well, through technicalities. You know, and white people were furious, you know what I'm saying? They were in outraged, you know, and they were outraged for years to come until he finally got locked up for something else. Um, but then I think about the Robert Blake trial. And Robert Blake was a guy that... Um, Similar to O.J. Simpson, he was kind of like a washed up celebrity, you know, he killed uh, his own wife. I don't know if he did it or not, you know, I didn't follow the case too closely, hardly anybody did. But popular consensus say that Robert Blake got away with murder. Even his own uh, children felt that uh, <laughs> their dad killed their mom, you know. So, you know, when he got off, what was the outcry? You know what I'm saying? Where was the rage that this person got away with murder? Oh, okay, I know why there was no rage. Because there was no racial component. Robert Blake was a white guy who killed his wife who was white. And um, it was no big deal, you know. As I said before, you know, a white life is only has value if a black person snuffs it out. And that's the um, so in America it's like we care more about the uh, color of the killer and the racial component if there is one in a murder than you know the actual murder rather who's guilty and who's innocent you know and if a, if a killer is going to walk it reminds me also I want to go into the Charles Stewart case which I touched on on, on a previous video about this white guy you know he kills his pregnant wife blames a black dude and you know and it creates a lot of racial tension in Boston at that time you know the good black people was holding their heads in shame like oh I can't believe you know black person killed did this you know making the whole black race look bad but you know then it turns out that oh wow it was the white uh, the husband you know killed his wife you know, and oh, how disappointed the white people were in Boston that a black guy didn't do it, you know. And some poor black smo almost took the rap for the case, you know. They already had him locked up and probably end up spending the rest of his life in jail or get the death penalty, you know. Uh, you know, it's almost like they uh, didn't care if they got the right guy or not, you know. It was just, you know, racial tensions, you know, black people are criminals and this and that and, uh, <laughs> and you know so I want to go into now okay serial killers and let's let, let's take a look at uh, Charles Manson now as far as Charles Manson let, let him go you know what I'm saying let him go you know like, you might as well 
our society looks at uh, Mr. Manson as as a celebrity type figure, you know, like this anti-hero. There's people that cling on to his rhetoric, like it's he like <laughs> like the Bible, like uh, you know, he comes out with all these conspiracy theories about, hey man, the government want to sell you all that fear, and people actually think Charles Manson is the truth. You know, they make T-shirts about him, and you know, get they get movies, um, but they forget, yeah, this guy killed people he helped orchestrated you know some grisly murders you know with his gang there you know he manipulate them into you know doing all sorts of heinous acts you know people tend to forget that yeah this is a dude who uh, snuffed out lives but you know the people he killed were white you know maybe he killed some black people but you know people are just so fascinated with this guy you know and we just and I also want to go on to another serial killer, another sick son of a bitch, um, John Wayne Gacy. Interesting, uh, this guy's very interesting, you know, he dressed up as Pogo the Clown. He, he was charged with 33 counts of murder. Um, you know, he could have killed more than that, those are the 33 bodies he buried in his backyard in the crawl space of his house whatever and I wonder how did this guy get away with killing for so long until he was finally caught you know all these young white boys was uh, disappearing around his um in his circumference I imagine if John Wayne Gacy was a black guy you know and all these white boys were just vanishing Last time they were seen was with this black guy. How high would the death count be before, you know, the police moved promptly to capture this guy? You know, maybe two bodies. <laughs> That's it. And let me go into the, um, the Columbine shooting. Going back into that old can of worms. You know, White people have uh, mocked the dead when they came out with a video game. Yes, an actual video game about the Columbine shooting where you play the uh, shooters, you know, going around uh, killing people. Now, I admit, when, when there's a school shooting, there's a bunch of white people getting killed at, uh, in a large quantity. You know, white people, you know, they, they act like they're... Um, like they're disturbed by it, you know, it may grab uh, attention. You know, I, I'm just saying, you know, a, a lot of these murderers, white murderers or whatever, you know, they grab national attention. And they are looked at as monsters, but it, it's not like when a, it, it's a whole different uh, scenario when a, a black person, you know, kills white people. They just, you know, they'll just look at all black people as animals. Like, um, Check out this, or let me create this scenario, you know, and prove me if I'm wrong. Uh, imagine, you know, that you have a serial killer, a sociopath, you know, a uh, psychopath, you know, and he killed 15 white girls, you know, he, he's, and good white girls too. I'm like, white girls that have a future, you know, uh, sororities at Ivy League College. He killed them, raped them, mutilated them, you know, and then tried to make a a suit made out of human skin, <laughs> if you know what I mean. You know, and people call him a monster or whatever, but then he'll get a t shirts maybe he'll get a video game, maybe he'll get his own uh, movie. But imagine a black guy, some black guy with braids in his hair, some barley, burly looking black dude who uh, rapes and kills a white female. And a white female with a dismal future, you know, someone who's a stripper and who's a meth head. You know, white people be going around talking about, oh, wow, this is diversity, you know. Black people are animals. They're always doing this to us, you know. <laughs> uh, this is what happens when you integrate with these animals and so forth. And, you know, let's take the, the, uh, the James Holmes case, you know, the Colorado shooter. You know, I'm like, he got his own Facebook fan page. I'm like, he got, you know, there's white kids dyeing their hair orange or green or whatever. You know, talking about this guy's an inspiration to them. 
<laughs> so it's just like, you know, they, they, they don't recognize white killers as just being killers. You know, like they're not going to celebrate some black guy, you know, who, um, <laughs> who just wouldn't just kill, you know, white people and so forth. You know what I'm saying? They get on high alert when it's a, a black guy killing white people, you know, and they'll just make YouTube videos about it. Like, um, that instance with those two, that, that couple there who got killed in Tennessee by, you know, oh, is it? five black people got convicted for their murders or whatever and these people mutilated their bodies you know six five or six black people got you know and that, that was awful you know that was terrible I looked at it, I'm like man how, how can black people do this but you know they didn't put out a cry when those two, what four white people like mutilated those two black guys uh, and I guess you know one one of them went to the police and I think only two of them was involved in the murders so I'm like if you ain't gonna make an outcry you know is it, it, you know what I'm saying it's like what I'm saying is that it seems like you know the the color of the perpetrator you know is more important than the uh, crime itself you know what I'm saying whether the black guy you know killed white people and so forth you know what I'm saying I can go into a whole lot of these uh, killer type guys but um that's all I want to say thanks for watching